Everybody already know who it is. Lil Runt. What's up, man? What's up, my dog? What's happening? <laughs> What's up, man? On time, I, bro. Yeah, bit of bit, bro. I had to I, I I had to get you on here, man. Uh you know, we gonna get straight to it, man. So let's do it. Are you originally from Lafayette? Yeah, I'm from Lafayette. Lafayette, Louisiana. Okay, okay. What part uh what part of Lafayette? Uh I forgot I forgot. I'm I'm from Macomb. But okay. I moved to Washington Heights. Washington Heights. I yeah. can't think of Yeah, 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 yeah. Washington Heights, man. Yeah, bro. Welcome to Nitty TV, man. I'm happy to, happy to have you in here, bro. It's a pleasure, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we go way back. Like, me and you go way back. Um, a lot of people probably don't know. Before music, we ain't even met messing yeah. with no music. Yeah. You know, we we ain't got to get into all that, but we've been knowing each other way before music. And uh, the crazy part, I remember, like, we had been knowing each other for at least about a year, year and a half before I even knew you do music or you knew I yeah. do music. I don't know if you remember this. Uh, and like I said, we had been knowing each other. Then I bump into you one night at Michael Lockett's studio. Yeah. You was in there smoking the blunt, freestyling your ass off. I ain't even know you rap or nothing. I'm like, man, I ain't done. Eventually, you know, I, I hooked up with this guy, uh, Troy Delco. He had Big Money Entertainment. And right. uh, he heard me rap. Unfortunately, I was at, uh, I was at Club Strawberries. Okay. And uh, Shaq was in there. Okay. And so uh, Shaq brought me on stage with him. Then he heard me rap. And he, from that point on, he signed me. To Big Money Records, and then uh, every week I would drive back and forth. He would come from Atlanta, pick me up in Lafayette. We'd go to Houston and record it up at Uptown, and then we'd come back until we finished the project. What What year was this? Ninety three. That was ninety three. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Ninety three. All right. So, Big Money Records that that was out of Lafayette. Nah, got, it was in Atlanta. Oh, you was from Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, okay. So your first record deal was from at, at, Atlanta. Yeah, I signed the independent deal with him, and then later on, I signed with Polygram. They had Anita Baker, but they didn't know how to how to market me, right? Because they they were known for rap labels. But how that all happened is independent. When I dropped my first album, I sold a hundred thousand copies. Right. And uh, six labels tried to sign me: Interscope, Geffen. Panorama, Polygram, uh, Slip and Slide, they had just started, they had just signed Trina, and all those labels tried to sign me, but we ended up signing with Polygram because they gave the most upfront money. Right. And it was a bad deal, but uh, you now, live and learn, you know. Now, that deal was on that album um, with that single, um, What You See Is What You yeah. Get. That was yeah. that album? Yeah, that was the album that got me the deal. That single, like I said, we sold almost... Uh, we sold 100,000 copies, and uh, the best deal would have been, I, I had a chance to sign with Interscope, and uh, Geffen had just signed, they had Mary J. Right. And uh, Loud Records tried to sign me, they had just signed Big Pun and uh, Exhibit, and it's crazy that when they when they flew me to Cali, and we walked in the office, that single was playing on the desk of the secretary. Right. And we didn't sign, and Exhibit was there, and his first single was called What You See Is What You Get. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's wow. crazy, bro. Yeah, that was big. Cause that was crazy because that's the kind of, time, kind of the time I really, you know, knew you with the music with that when you came out with that single. So, mm -hmm. And I knew it was through like a, a, a record label. And yeah. back then we was rapping, but we didn't have no record labels. And I was like, damn, well, you know, what he doing? How he doing all that, you know? This was 95 uh, when yeah. all this, when my album came out and then, I signed in 97, and then 99, I had an opportunity to do 186 college campus tour right. with uh, the Yin Yang Twins, T.I., Bone Crusher, Akita, G. Devin, the dude. None of them had a deal yet. Right. And I ended up getting caught up. Right. And went to prison in 2000, and the tour was supposed to start in June of 2000. I went to prison in April. Okay. So but I ended up signing the deal to do it. Knowing I was dealing with that, and I didn't get to make the tour, so right, yeah, because I remember all that time when when when, yeah. when all that happened, you got locked up. You was right in the middle of music. A lot of big stuff was going down. Yeah, 
So, uh, so that was two thousand. With that, that was the feds, huh? It was the yeah, okay. I got locked up April fourth, four days for my birthday. Wow. Two thousand. Got out in two thousand six. So you did six flat. Six on eight. Damn. Eighty five percent, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah, that was a that's, bad. That was bad timing, cause I ain't gonna lie. I sat in there, man, summertime, 2000, and I watched every one of them get a record deal. Right. T.I. was on the tour. He went to Atlantic. Uh, Luda went to uh, Def Jam South. The Ying Yang Twins went to uh, Lil John. The East Side Boys went to Lil John. Bone Crusher went that way. All of them was on the tour. Right. Right. Yeah, I went to jail. Yeah. <laughs> where, you, um, where you did your time at? I did uh, Atlanta. And I did Beaumont. Bloody Beaumont. Nasty Beaumont, yeah. And Oklahoma. Nasty Oklahoma. Stayed there a little bit. That's like the holding spot. Disgusting, bro. I already know. I didn't hear a lot of stuff. I'm originally from Beaumont. Oklahoma, I'm talking about. Oh, oh, Oklahoma? Worse than Beaumont? Yeah. It's like the holding spot until they decide where they're going to send you. Yeah. You got you got a crazy prison story you can share with? <laughs> I done seen some stuff, man. Like I I done seen things, bro, that make a grown man cry. You know what I'm saying? I, I already know. And like they say, the main thing, bro, when you in there, I went I went to prison when I was 21. I made 21 that, in prison. You was that young? I made 21 in prison. So when we when we used to holler and all that, you was a teenager. I was young, man. Damn. I made 21 in prison, four days for my birthday, bro. And when I walk in there, they look at me like, who's this kid? Yeah, because you, you look you <laughs> look young and you shot it. I could about imagine. Yeah. So it was, it was. I done seen some things. I met a lot of good people. And, and believe it or not, eight of the dudes that I deal with right now is dudes I was locked up with. Right. Like from New York to L.A. to Houston, I can go there and, and I ain't got to worry about nothing. Right. Like these dudes is... Doing some big things, and they just know, they just know what it feel like, you know, what loyalty mean, and what it feel like to have real dudes right. around them. So, yeah, just, and, yeah. And, and 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 back then, uh, see the feds different right now. Like back then, to go to the feds, so everybody in the feds was some type of plug, pretty much, because everybody was on a certain level to get to the feds. So they had a lot of major. People in them feds. Bro, I seen MC Hammer come over there and visit. I seen Irv Gotti. I done seen, uh, my celly was Adrian Peterson's daddy, Nelson Peterson. Right. I played football, big dog. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. That was my celly. You know, he was in there. He had did 10 years for armed robbery. I, I, I met a dude in there who claimed he was R. Kelly daddy. No shit. Sure. And looked just <laughs> like him and, and could tell stories like he was messing with his mom in New Orleans and. You know, it. you see a lot of people come through that, and it wasn't just for drugs. It was for majority of things, bro. They, yeah. had, they had people in there for murder, rape, taking money. You know, it don't matter what it was. They're going to stick you all together. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Yeah, so so you did six, and I see you, you, you came home, got straight back to it, straight yeah. back on the music. Yeah, I came back to it, man. It was something that I love to do, so I, I prepared for it. You know what I'm saying? I sat in there and prepared, man. Did a lot of writing. Right. A lot of writing. Yeah. I tell him I don't have to write another song for the rest of my life. <laughs> like, for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You jumped on it, bro. So uh, you was you was in the, in the music um, in the nineties, way before the internet days. Oh yeah. And stuff like that, and. Um, you still doing the music after the internet days. You know everything is digital. What uh what, what what you prefer? Before the internet or after the internet? I prefer before the internet, man. When it was hands on, man, you got your cassette, your C D and, and you know what I'm saying? The game had changed so much that it you gotta really love it to deal with it right now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because it the stuff you hear on the radio, the stuff you're hearing it's nothing compared to the days when we came up when they had the Scarface, they had Outkast, they had 8-Ball and MJG. Right. You, you could distinguish the artists. 
You, when you heard something, you know, oh, that's too short. Right. Oh, that's eight ball. They all had a style, they had and they were saying something. You know what I'm saying? Even right. if it was gangster or or something to teach you, you, you could understand it. Right. It didn't make you want to go kill somebody. Right. But not everything now is auto tune. Shoot them up. You <laughs> right. know what I'm saying? It's disgusting, bro. It's disgusting. And it's like back in the nineties, like you had to be on the grind to stick out. You had to be out there. Putting your posters up, yeah. um, hand in hand with your seat. Like if you stuck out in the nineties, you was doing your thing. Because right now it's like you know, not talking down or nothing, but they could just jump on the internet, or damn near get on their phone and record a song on their phone and load it up to the internet. Now you're a rapper. But back yeah. then you had to, you know, you had to have your little fifteen hundred dollars to press your CDs yeah. up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Get your album cover done. You know and. Uh, yeah, I, I I definitely prefer before the internet too, because a lot of people say it's more easy now. You know, you can load up to all these sites and all that. But yeah, right, I think it, I think it was more organic back in the nineties. Yeah, right now you hear a lot of this music and it all sound the same. It do, and then you go and look at the views, the million views for that junk, and then the people who's really saying something got ten views. Right, but. They don't understand that. You could pay for them views. Yeah, yeah, you could. That, that don't make you a better artist. That just, you, you're you just trying to get somebody to say, oh, yeah, I got 10 million views. Mm-hmm. Man, that's trash. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, there's so many good artists out here that you'll never hear. Right. Because we're so saturated with all this, the same 10 people on the radio mm-hmm. every day with the auto-tune that sound exactly the same, right. saying the same stuff, that's- man. Cause and back to what you said a little while ago, how these guys sound the same. Cause I remember back in the day, uh, you hear you hear a rapper from Cali, um, see both spike. You you automatically know that's some Cali shit. Yeah. Uh, you hear some Houston, you already know that's Houston. You hear some bounce, you know that's New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Now even in New Orleans, the Cali, the Atlanta, everybody got that same little twitch to the to their sound. That, that's, you don't know where nobody from no more. Just listening to the song. That's crazy. You don't know what they're saying, really. Yeah. Like I, I sometimes I catch people and they they singing a the song back and I'm like, man, what is you saying? Like, what? And sometimes they saying stuff and don't understand what they are saying <laughs> is some stupid shit. Like right. they repeating it though, and it's, I'm like, well, you didn't hear what you just said, right? But that's the song got them hypnotized. The radio make them. Right. If you listen to a radio station for a week, I guarantee you're gonna sing one of them songs and right. don't know what the hell you're singing, right. bro. Cause you was on the radio when it was hard to get on the radio. Like yeah. you was on the radio in the in the nineties, like the early nineties. I remember hearing you shit. That what you see is what you get. You had another one on the radio too. Yeah, I had geology. Uh-huh. I had I a had, uh, freestyle flow. I had I had a, I had a couple things, mm-hmm. but my 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 toughest project would have been before I got locked up. Man. Right, like I had a project that I was getting ready to drop. And I had Bushwick on there. I had Devin the Dude. I had 69 Boys. I had uh, Fat Pat on there. I had uh, MC Breed. And while I was locked up, I was trying to hurry up and get it put out. Somebody mm-hmm. broke in my producer car and stole all the masters. Right. So that ended up a, a lost project that I never got to put out. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, that's it crazy. It was meant to be, I guess, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. Proud was Paul Milk. So you um you you been kind of ahead of the game. Like um especially like for our area is more of a a southern soul is like is 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 bigger than the rap shit in this area really in the yeah. 337 especially for locals and like you saw that long time ago. Yeah. So uh like, what made you get on that train? Like, because I seen, you know, I remember you from back in the day rapping about that, but you still rap the same and do your shit, but it's like you gravitated to make it more Southern Soul R&B type of songs with your, with your rap flow. Like, how that came about? When I got out, I seen the evolution, man. I seen things change. Like I said, before I went, to, before I went in, there wasn't cell phones like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. And to get out and see kids on cell phones and to see what they were listening to, and it was just like one day I start listening to the music and I'm riding through the hood and I see Roy. I see Roy Anthony. And he had his studio on Bro Bridge. And I'm like, man, I want to I wanna get in something different. You know what I'm saying? I, I got to quit all the cursing. I got to do all that because I, I'm trying to change up the, the, the style. Right. 
And he let me in the studio. He said, okay, let me see what you sound like on this. So he played the song, Cause You Love Me, with Lisa. Right. And I started rapping. And he was like, all right. And after that, he said, I want to do a whole project on you. But right. I told him, I said, on this project, I don't want to do no cursing. I don't want to degrade no women. I want to do it where I can make them, make it feel right right without me having to shoot somebody or, or, or talk down right. on them, you know? Right, right. And when I did it and we did the song, uh, the song my first single was uh, Would You Like It? Okay. And the radio immediately took it. And then we was like, we got some. So right. from that point on, I said, I'm not going to turn back. Yeah. And and a lot of artists try to get me to do things with them. And I'm like, I do it, man, but it can't be on a level of right. like that because I don't want to lose the audience I built. Right. I built an audience that, like, I got 60, 70-year-old people that, like, oh, man, yeah. I like your music. Yeah, yeah, so if best. I come back talking about uh, B and Asia and, and I'm killing you and all that, they're going to be like, nah, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. You most definitely built your artists because you want some, uh, you want some big songs. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a DJ myself, so I, you know, in this area, you got, it, you got to mix it up at these parts with the southern soul and the rap, and, and there's a lot of songs you on. So when I be playing this song, I be like, man, that's my nigga shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I want but, a lot uh, of stuff. That's big. So you signed the deal with Roy. Uh, we, we got a partnership deal. I'm, I got my own label. It's called Felon Entertainment. Okay. And it means the freedom every living organism needs. Okay. So I started my production company. I got five movies I didn't, I didn't put out independent. Okay. You know, and I, I, I collaborated with him and I'm Mo Hits Entertainment and Felon Entertainment. So right. he allowed me to do what I do, but he, he play a big part in making sure it get done the right way. Right, you know? right, right, right. That's, yeah. that's what's up, man. What's up, bro? Yeah, y'all got it. Whatever you and Roy got uh, going over there, that's a uh, that's a good chemistry. Yeah, Batman uh, and Robin. That's like the new school. Oh yeah, uh, Dre and Snoop. Yeah, yeah. That's what yeah, I call it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I tell him. The yeah, new school a, Dre and Snoop, man. Yeah, that was that, that was a powerful move. Feel that good. Was, that was smart thinking. Some feel, yeah. feel good music because uh, ain't too many rappers in that lane, and it's like you you stick out in that lane. You know what I'm saying? You didn't you didn't. Got yourself, you know, in a position where you could get paid shows and, and stuff. Yeah. You on these big songs, you know. And uh, that's what's up, man. You know. Yeah, I'll be paying I'll be I'll be paying attention to all that shit, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, bro. It gotta start here with your local, but it's it's just so hard when you know, when when your local don't support the local, they they support the person standing behind you. Right. You know what I'm saying? How right. you gonna do it when you talking down on the local who representing? Right. Yeah, you gotta go to a whole nother city to get, to get it popping. Yeah. It's sad, bro. Like so, you be you get booked. Seems like you get booked more out of state and out of town shows, right? Yeah, I get what's, booked a lot. What's like what's some spots like? What's what's some cities and places y'all be at? Like Florida, we be Jacksonville, Pensacola, uh, DC. We we getting ready to do Virginia, uh, a lot of Alabama, Mobile, Montgomery, you know what I'm saying, stuff like that. Uh, mainly Alabama, Mississippi, South right. Carolina. Them three right there, they constantly right. looking like for for that type of music, you wouldn't even believe the concerts every week, man. Oh, like I, I believe it, but I, it's the I, same I, artists. I pay attention, yeah. Like they, they got like maybe seven artists in that Southern Soul market that stay. Getting booked every week, right? And and you go to the show, it's stupid. <laughs> you been I be, to? I be paying attention. Bruh, man. I be watching. Let me tell you, man. You go to that uh spring fling, uh huh. Forty thousand people, yeah, in Alabama every year. Like, I, it blew me away. I'm like, forty dollars a ticket, start not. Wow, forty thousand people, and I'm not exaggerating, dog. That's probably so, too too little. That's a bag. Yeah, right all there, day, all day. So, two two guys do that. So spring fling that that consists of southern soul or yeah, is it it's mixed just southern soul? It's just southern soul. Twenty something acts one day. Wow, all day just straight concert all day I, and the people out there BYOB and just going hard. I think a lot of people from this area don't really understand how big southern soul really is because some of the biggest southern soul artists is from right here. Yeah, yeah, and they think it's just right here. Yeah. 
But I be watching y'all in Carolina, and, and, yeah. and, and, and every time I call you, like, I, I mean, we don't talk every, every day, but, I, I, you know, I call you here. So every time I call you, man, I'm in Florida. Man, I'm in California. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's crazy. And, 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 uh, yeah, it's, that's, that's, that's definitely a real, real big market, man. You don't, get, you don't get too many rap concerts like we used to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they, they bought, they tried to bring 50 Cent, I remember, and all of them to the cage and them that to cancel it because right. the ticket sales wouldn't right. Right. How your ticket sales ain't gonna be right? Yeah. That's artists you don't see every day. Right. They just can, they just canceled another one um, a little while. Who does? Lil Boost and Lil Baby. Oh, they, they canceled that. I yeah, figured they got, it. got canceled I twice. I, I figured it, man. You, you you can't get no support. When I seen Janet Jackson come here and it wasn't even halfway full, mm-hmm. I said it's done. This market ain't for you wasting it's, your money, bro. It's for Southern Soul and Zydeco. I didn't realize how big Zydeco was. To, uh, there's some people I know they took me to um, to Paramedal to a, what they call it a trail ride I, mm-hmm. you know I don't be on all that but I had never been to a trail ride and that was my first time going to one and um, Keep Frank I forgot who you know them Zydeco and it was so packed man and I said man it's a whole nother uh, you know there's some whole other stuff bro yeah yeah but the the thing about it is the Zydeco market here then got, it didn't slow down because yeah. with all the shooting. Right. Youngsters yeah, they, going yeah, there yeah, shooting. Yeah, 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 yeah. They didn't start wilding out yeah. over there. You don't see trail rides too much here no more. Now the, the artists like Keith Frank and Chris are doing, they don't even let promoters book them no more. Right. They booking their own shows. Right. That's smart though. Yeah, the way it is, yeah. But, you know, so yeah. it didn't slow down the, the Zydeco people having to book the same two, three artists who willing to take the gigs. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's 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 crazy, bro. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know. But they're right, man. They're right. Been in the game a long, long, long time. People don't know that, man. Yeah. They yeah. probably got a lot of people think you just came on the scene. Oh man. Been that man when when Master P was riding in his uh Impala, in Impala? his chameleon Impala riding around and all that and. Remember when Scarface and all of them used to come to Strawberries? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, man. It's it been a long, long time, man. Long time coming, bro. And Yeah, that's uh, what's up, bro. Been around a lot of them, but now I'm just trying to elevate, man, and do some different things. Mm-hmm. You know, I got my TV show right now. Okay. Radio show. Talk about that, man. Yeah, my TV show been on almost eight months. It's called Felon Television. And like I said, I just try to turn a negative into a positive. And I do a lot of interviewing different local businesses and, and let the people know about these businesses, you know, to help support them, play local videos. And I do skits, funny stuff, something to just keep you, keep you smiling, you know, right, nothing, right. nothing gloomy. And yeah. uh, that, that comes on every Monday at 630 on Cox 15 LUS3, mm-hmm. you know, every Monday. And uh, I got a radio show called Grown Folks Hip Hop okay. on 92.7 that come on every Friday at 10 o'clock. And, so, and now I'm on for two hours. I was on one hour, now I'm two hours. And I play all that old school hip-hop, like that Curtis Blow and that yeah. Run DMC and all that. Yeah, yeah, you take that, them that, back. Yeah, that, when, when music was music, yeah. bro. You know, and I, I, that been on for about seven months. And uh, just trying to bring another game. I got a cartoon that uh, I've been doing. It's called Lil Run Buddies. And I, I get a lot of the different Southern Soul artists to play little parts in yeah. it. Yeah. You know, and I just try I to think, create, man. I think I saw the preview of that cartoon. Yeah, we we didn't put six of them up, so they they be some little five minute cartoons. But once I get to like thirty minutes, I'm gonna run a whole show, right? Because each cartoon run into the next one, right? The way I write it. Yeah. So, uh, just trying to do some different stuff, man. Uh, I'm getting, I'm I'm not getting ready, but I'm I'm shooting another movie right now. It's called uh, Pastor Do Dirty. Okay, and it's a comedy about a. Uh, a pastor who just won't get it right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is my sixth movie that I did, and it just trying to do some different stuff, man. I've been in a lot of little movies like Chess with Forrest Whitaker. I did uh, 12 Rounds with John Cena. Right. I did Bad Lieutenant with Nicolas Cage. I did uh, Meet the Spartans with Lil Wayne and Forrest Whitaker. Okay. Uh, not Meet the Spartans. Uh, it's called, it was called... Uh, Hurricane season. Okay. Yeah, but I did meet the Spartans too with uh Carmen Electra and Method Man. 
uh, just some little small roles in the back, but yeah. I got an opportunity to really, you know what I'm saying, get in. Uh, I love you, Philip Mars, with Jim Carrey. We did that in Angola. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I that's, did a lot of stuff, that's, man. Yeah, that's what's up. That's, that's new yeah. to me, man. I ain't, I ain't know about oh, yeah, man. I did. So you do, you do a lot of writing yourself, too. Yeah, a yeah. lot. So you did. You wrote that uh, Tomorrow Not Promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote that and. uh I wrote, I wrote a lot of stuff for a lot of artists. I just can't say who. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I but, wrote it for. But, yeah. yeah, but the tomorrow not promise. That's your song. That's my song. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a that's a that's a that's a pretty big song. I see y'all did a remix. Of, yeah, uh, me and Roy Reed did a remix, so. and we came this close to getting Jaheem on it. Oh yeah, and uh, just like Jaheem going through some things with his record label. Yeah, and we sat with him, and he wanted to do it on GP. He didn't want to get us sued or him right, sued, right? So that didn't work out, but that would have been big. Yeah, that's a that's a big. Uh, yeah, that would have been. Stupid. That's a that's a big song right there, man. Yeah, bro. Just, just pushing it, man. Just trying to, like I said, in the game, bro. When you don't have that that powerhouse behind you, right. You just gotta be consistent. Yeah, you gotta have keep dropping, and then one of them. Some somebody gonna grab, yeah. and when they grab it, then they are gonna start looking through your library. Yeah, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, that, that's all yeah, it takes. Yeah, you just what, gotta be consistent. Right, right. Yeah. That's why you gotta keep going, keep getting to well, like yeah. you say. Yeah. Be consistent, man. I tell all the artists that be consistent, bro. Yeah, you know, even if you do an event somewhere and they show on social media, you got a fly and and they keep seeing that. It don't matter if nobody showed up. Yeah, they don't know that. Yeah, they just know. Damn, he here, he here, he yeah. here. Now we gotta deal with it. Right, you know. Right. It's just that's, a, that's 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 real, man. Strategy, bro. Instead of sitting was, home waiting on them to come call you, don't happen all the time. Nah, the music game. Uh, what's the best thing you like about this music shit? What's the worst thing about it? To be honest, at this point, I don't like nothing about it. Right. Like the only reason I'm still with it is because the passion I have. Yeah. I've been doing this all my life, so. As long as you can wake up in the morning and say, look, I do this for free. Yeah. When you feel like that, then there's nothing around you that can right. that d- discourage you from doing it. You know what I'm saying? Because right. it don't matter how you feel about my music. If you're going to pay me, I'm still going to do it. Right. So when you feel like that, it's even like getting up for a job, for, for right. work. Once you feel like that's your passion, it don't matter what people think about it or how they, how they come with it. So that's, right. that's the only thing that I love about the music is that I never quit. And I love to do it, and I love the feeling I give people. Right. When 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 they hear it, and they're like, "Man, I like that." Now, that's a good feeling for people to say, "I like what you're doing." Right. So that that's the best thing I I love about it, man. I mean, yeah. The perks is good sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Most definitely, bro. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, I, I pretty much been paying attention to your career, like I said, since I've been knowing you since the nineties, and I could see the. Uh, you know, I could see where it elevated. It. You always was on another level to me compared to other, you know, locals. But you definitely elevated right now with that, uh, you know, with that Southern Soul. Cause that's, that's like the biggest shit in the area, the Southern Soul music right now. And it's like you you at the top with the top people who doing it, you know. So that's that's big, man. I try to do it, man, like where it ain't labeled Southern Soul. Because I want to do it where they can jam it so and so, but they can also bring it mainstream. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because eventually every artist want to be on a mainstream level. You Definitely. don't want to be labeled so and so, independent, this. You want to be to a point where you can be a yeah. superstar. Yeah. And that's why I try to keep the music where it can go either way. But when you do that, it's hard. Right. Because it's, it's hard for people to label you like, I don't know what to label this. I never heard this type of music before. Right. You know, but... I remember Mystical telling me that he said, man, when you're different, it's going to take a while. But he said, when they're going to grab it, they're going to run with it. Right. And that happened to him. Right. You remember when he first came out? Yeah. I was in Atlanta. Yeah. And he did the Gavin convention. And uh, I called. I heard him on the radio station. I called him. I said, Mike, man, I'm out here. What's up? He said, man, come on, man. I'm going to be at the, uh, at the tavern tonight. The, uh, like three weeks before that, he did the Gavin convention. They booed him. Right. They threw beer bottles at him. Like, boo. Right. When he came back for that show, 
Boy got on stage in a tuxedo and some Nikes. He said, somebody said they were looking for me. <laughs> yeah, I go. They towed it down, the door down, bro. They kicked the door in. It yeah. was so packing that they wouldn't let no more people in. Damn. Them boy from New Orleans kicked the door in. They said, we coming, we coming in. God damn. And they showed me how it just changed like that in three months for him, man. And see what you said, bro? All bullshit aside. The very first time I heard Mystical, like this was, you know, uh, I forgot what, what the album, but it was that first shit he was coming out. I didn't like it. I was like, you know, he tongue twisting and all this shit. And then uh, a little bit later, just like you said, I was the same. I was like, this nigga go, this nigga here go hard, yeah, you know? Bro. Yeah, yeah. I felt the same way about that shit, bro. Yeah, that's, it just what's, took time. What's what's some artists you met or uh, dealt with like out your out, out your career? Some 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 big artists. I met I met some big artists. I ain't dealt with them, but I met like. Big artists from Babyface to uh, Jermaine Dupree, Ice Cube, Master P, uh, Bone, Mac Ten, Too Short, mm-hmm. Scarface. I done, I done met some some big artists. Outkast, Red Man, Method Man, Key Murray, Tupac. Man. You didn't you didn't you didn't you didn't been around, man. Yeah. I, I was in that that time, and, and let me let me share one little story with you. I was in California, man, like in '93, and uh, you ever heard of a girl, a dude named uh, uh, Mike Mosley? Yeah, that's a producer. <laughs> he produced all Tupac. Yeah, and so I was in the I was in the elevator, and I was I I went uh they had this group called By Chance, and I was I was cool with them. They had just signed uh with uh MCA, and one of them was in that movie Why Do Fools Fall in Love? Okay. So, I was in the elevator. They they all stayed in that same condo in North Hollywood. And he he was in the elevator. He said, "Man, you look like a rapper." I had my blonde hair. Remember? <laughs> yeah, I, re- I remember the blonde. <laughs> I hair. said, oh, "Yeah, I rap." He said, "Man, let me let you hear some things." Took me in his thing. He was letting me hear all the uh, Brenda got a baby and all that. None of that stuff had even came out yet. Like wow. he had produced for E Forty, Too Short, and I wasn't really on pop like that. Right and. Gave me the info. He said, man, you got to get with me. We was kicking it for like three days. I never really paid no mind to him. Right. And later on, I started hearing Tupac always hollering, my man Mike yeah, Mosley. Mike Mosley. And I'm like, oh, man, I was right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just overlooked him. You overlooked it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Overlooked yeah, him, yeah, man. Yeah, that, producing everybody from... from uh, that, that was the whole plug right there. Man, bro. Yeah, I done heard a lot about uh, Mike Mosley. I mean, I never personally met him, but I definitely heard a lot yeah. about him. They all would holler him on that West Coast. He was doing all the tracks. It was him and Ann Banks. Right. Yeah, yeah, Ann Banks. Ann Banks was a dog. Mm-hmm. Doing all the tracks for all them boys, man. The, DJ see the, Quick. Yeah. But the West Coast had it at one, like, like, like the, 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 the music scene that moved to the West at yeah. one time. When all them boys, like the Spice, one, the Sebo, uh, mm-hmm. you know, Pac, all them niggas. Like, California had a wave at one time. Then it... You know, and it went down, came down south. But it was like when music, like I said, you they had West Coast, and they had a pile of dudes there that was jamming. Yeah. Then they had Houston was jamming, yeah. and they clicked. Yeah. Then they had the East Coast with, with yeah. Nas and all them jam. So everybody had a, a side that was, you could distinguish them. You could. And they always making money, bro. Yeah. You know, but nah, like I said, you don't know who's who, man. Shit you know, crazy. What's what, bro? <laughs> I, I think what it is, see that internet, like, like so, okay, so I say like a nigga down south, like a nigga from Louisiana didn't have access to what they was doing and how they was living in California. California ain't had access to what we was doing out here, you know, and, and anywhere else. So it's like with that internet, you get to go online and see how they dress it and see you type of music. It was easy to access them than everybody trying to be like each other. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Atlanta got most of the artists. Yeah, you know, but they I, Atlanta I, I, like the I, hub, right? Yeah, though. but they got they got a plug out there that just that just the plug to put them on. You know what right. I'm saying? They got the plug. Atlanta got the plug. It must be somebody big that's behind the radio that right. lived there that they know how to right. how to touch them. You know what I'm saying? Everything coming out of Atlanta, man. What, what you think about like the three three seven area? Like you got. Big artists, platinum artists from New Orleans, two hours down the road. You got platinum artists, 
from Baton Rouge, 45 minutes down the road. Like, why you think the 337 never really got a big star? Like, we got a few, but you know what I mean? Like, you know, like, New Orleans got multiple, like, uh, artists that got big deals, you know, sold millions of records, same thing with Baton Rouge. But it's like, 337 never really got that yet. I think it's, I don't know. What do you think is more CEOs in, in the big cities, more big label? Like, what it is? It's more hating. Straight, hey. Just straight up. Like, it's, it's no support, man. Like, all these Baton Rouge artists, nothing respect for them, but they don't blow up in Baton Rouge. Right. They, blow they come up, here. They blow up in Lafayette. They come here. Yeah. They come here. New Orleans artists don't blow up in New Orleans, but the thing about New Orleans is if you want to blow up in Louisiana, you got to go to New Orleans because they're the only right. place you can bring any kind of concert and pack a house. Right. You know what I'm saying? I done seen got, um, Willie Nelson come to, it, it don't matter who it is. Right. And, right. and from the House of Blues on up, they're going to have a crowd, bro. I don't care who come perform. They just want to party. Can't bring that here, though, man. But I, I learned about the Baton Rouge market. They send somebody here right. from that way, let them get ready or whatever, and they introduce us to them. Right. And, and then they start booking them. It's, if they come together, you go to New York, New York, repping New York. Right. They don't care which city is New York. Right. You know what I'm saying? Houston repping Houston. They may have their little beefs in the little spots, but at the end of the day, all you know is that, that's Houston. Right. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But us... You say that's, us, oh, that's Baton Rouge, that's New Orleans. You ain't going to say that's Louisiana. Now, what you think? I think this is a problem with it, too. I don't think this is the main problem, but I think it's got something to do with it. Like, okay, so you got New Orleans. They got a signature sound for bounce music, right? So Baton Rouge got a signature sound for jig music. So if you from Baton Rouge, you make some jig music, just being from Baton Rouge, that, that simply that could kind of get you on another area. You're making jig music, it's jamming, and you're from Baton Rouge. Same thing with the bounce in New Orleans. But, like, I think another thing, like, we don't have a signature sound in the 337. You think that play a part, too? Because let me, let me break it like this. You go to New Orleans and they got the bounce music, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know how many artists out there doing that? Yeah. You ain't going to hear about all of them. Right. But they'll yeah. send it our way, the and then we jam thing. it. Then when they send it back, now it's... We yeah. gave them the seal. Right. Baton Rouge the same way. They got a lot of dudes doing jig right. music. Send it our way, and then we st we stamp it, and they send it back. Then it's, it's right. official. So it's just that we don't support here. Let me, let me tell you this. Like you said, the main thing, there's all the Southern Soul artists. When I'm out of town, I like the Tucker, Roy, Cupid, all of them. They all from here. All from here. But why? Why? We got to go out there. Why not just y'all all get together and say, okay, let's do the tour together. <laughs> we don't need no promoter. We don't need right. a cap. We going to put us five together. We strong enough. And let's go in and book these spots and do Facts. it and show them how Lafayette do Facts. it. You know what I'm saying? They won't do that because too many people want to be a king. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's big Play fact. your role, man. That's big facts, man. Play your role. And when you get up that shine. Play your role, but they won't do it. It's the man, egos, hey, man. They'd be a stupid tour. Man, yeah, Cupid, yeah. Tucker, Rod, Chuck. He could do it, though. We all from here. And all them boys got bread. They could make you know that happen. Saying? They don't need no out of time. Ain't going to shut every them yeah. sitting down. You get Tucker, Rod, Cupid, Connie G, all of them is from here. Bring that over there. Versus them, you go to Alabama, you got two, three here, two, three there. Right. When I start naming these cats and I'm out of town, they like, dang, you know all of them. I say, man, they from around the way, man. <laughs> well, yeah. Five, ten minutes, man. Like, hear the phone go. Here you go. T like, damn. Tucker and Ron from Iberia Parish, from Lower They're cousins. Yeah. So man, that's, that's crazy, That's just bro. to a point where sometimes it just get, it get overwhelming because I'm like, bro, it's enough for everybody, man. If I was in that position, I would, I'd bow down. Right. I'd call them all. Hey, look, I get this a percent for everybody. Let's do it. Yeah. You don't need to worry, wait on them to book you. The same venues we I've been playing all this time, I'm going to call them myself, yeah. and I'm going to book it. it. It's just like a Bruno Mars. Who going to pay Bruno Mars $1.5 million to come perform? <laughs> right. That's what he charged. Damn. But he do that because he know he can go book the Cajun on himself and right. make more than that. Right. That's to deter right. the, the promoters from not wanting to do it. I can do that. I'm big enough. 
One point five. That's just to let you know that I'm gonna go and book it myself, and I'm gonna make me the whole dough. Right. It's not. Right. They're not stupid, man. It just didn't. They don't think, bro. When it come to business, man, it's yeah, bro. Everybody want to be it's, one. You know, it's stronger. Like they say, united. Uh, we stand. Divided, we fall. Like so, like they come together and do the shit to be way bigger and way. Bro. Way stronger. Because what right. you just said, that makes so much sense. I can actually visualize that and see it right now. Boy, putting some shit together and going right. on tour. It's retarded, man. You think the Bulls won with just Michael Jordan? <laughs> Hell Each no. one of them players had a role to play. Yeah. They could have sat on. You don't think Michael Jordan going to score 100 points by himself? Right. They don't see yeah, it like that, yeah, man. Play yeah. your role, bro. Yeah, yeah, you need the team, man. Just be good at what you do. That's all. And don't trip. If the, if the man on the side getting more than you are, hey, bro. Long as you you doing what you do, right, and getting compensated for what you do, come together, man, make it big, right. Now, what you think about this situation with a girl? What's her name? Brittany, uh, Brittany Grinder got caught up oh, in Russia oh. with the damn pin. Gave her nine years, yeah, for, that, for that's, a pin. That all stems to you know they don't like us, man. Like that's crazy. This country's fighting. We've been fighting like that. So I just seen a day where Dennis Rodman going out there to try to I, get out. I saw something like that. He gonna get himself caught up by that. Yeah. Man. Hey, that's the same yeah. thing I say. I said, man, Dennis Rodman better not bring his ass out there. He ain't got that much power. Yeah, bro. Oh, you better man. do that shit over the phone or something. Oh yeah. He's gonna be locked up right by man. I mean, so, man, nine years for a fucking uh, weed pen. Up right that's, they, that's. I I, I guess say I think they trying to prove a point. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Or something, bro. They did it. Yeah. They, 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 won't, they won't swap her. They, right. They trying to swap her for one of their uh, people here, but they won't do it because they know that they, they grabbed a the powerful one there. Right. So they're going to use their bargaining power, but that's us not not being smart, man. You know the rules they got out there. Right. The government's yeah. got rules. Yeah. And you got to check that before you go yeah. stick yourself out there. Yeah. So it ain't all their fault. They, she fell in the trap. Yeah. It's a sad situation, that's, but that's, that's crazy. She bro. fell in a trap, and they're gonna juice that for all they can get yeah. out of her, bro. Yep. You know, it's just about being smart, man. But like I said, I just hope these artists around here come together, bro. Yeah, bro. You know, it's it's disgusting, like the talk about each other and this man come together, man, make yeah, this bro. money, bro. Yeah, man. And and shut up, man, and just and be good with it, bro. It's just. Fighting each other, and then you got to go out there and fight. Yeah. Because we've been making all these artists rich. All yeah. these bouncers, all these, these oh, jigs, yeah. all the Texas, uh, when they had the screwed up movement, all them boys come out here. Yeah. Lafayette is like the hub. They speak highly of Lafayette because they know they come out here and get that money. Oh, yeah. You but know? they know Louisiana got it. Yeah. Look all the, look all the bounce songs. They make him big. Drake come there. Beyonce right. come right. there. And, and, and don't even want to give Frida... No credits on the last song. You saw that, right. huh? Yeah, I saw that's that. cold. That's cold. But that's going to show you we don't care about what you're doing. Yeah. A lot of people ain't heard of you, so we big. We gonna take your stuff and yeah. make it bigger and take all the uh, credit for it. Right. I'm saying, what Drake them know about New Orleans? That's from crazy. Toronto, man. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. And he and he come out here and he get the. The, the 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 real producer, the black and mild, to make him so you know you go have that for show sure sound. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, but that's at least what we let. At, 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 at least throw one of them New Orleans artists on the song or something. They they just come and take the shit, yeah. do a solo song with it. Yeah, they don't even know what the hell they talking about. <laughs> just know that they've been in that city and that's where they jamming. Okay, I'm gonna take it worldwide. And it's but, crazy, man. But I pay attention to Drake. He did the same. He, he, I think he go in every region and was hot because he went to Houston and redid that. What does that June twenty seven or something? Oh, he did that too. Yeah, I'm talking. I made it a hit, a big hit. What I think that was June. It was one of them famous. He was either June twenty seven or one of them with, with that little beat that they all freestyle on. Yeah, he took it and made it a a, a Houston song. But he out there all the time. You know who found him? Yeah, yeah, I heard Jay Prince. Jay Prince's uh, son. Yeah, yeah, Jay Prince's son. And they just didn't have a place for him at Rapala, so they just signed him up and said, run with cash money right quick because they hot right now. Yeah. But we're going to eat off you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he got about 10 people, like, right. he got to feed before he even get a check. Right, right. See the credits on him. Still worth $100 million. Yeah, yeah, that boy. He worth more than Lil Wayne. That's something, huh? Yeah, that's crazy, bro. Worth more than Lil yeah, Wayne, and big, you signed yeah. with Lil Wayne. Yeah, he's bigger than Wayne right now. Mm-hmm. 
Well, bro, before we get out of here, uh, let these people know, you know, where they can find you, your, your, your IG, Facebook, or whatever, you, you know. You can find me on Instagram at Real Lil Runt, Facebook at Official Lil Runt, TikTok at Real Lil Runt, YouTube at Lil Runt. Check me out every Monday at 6.30 on Cox 15 LUS 3 and every Friday on 92.7 and 92.9 FM for Grown Folks Hip Hop Radio, man. If you want to book me for your events, 504-598-4873. I'm the Prince of Grown Folks Hip Hop, man. That's In the building. That's what's up, man. Pre- appreciate you coming through the Nitty TV, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate y'all, my brother. Keep it popping, man. Y'all show some support. Nitty TV, man. And make sure y'all tune in, subscribe, check him out, man, and show some support, bro. That's all I can say. Yes, sir. Y'all hit that subscribe button. Don't forget, y'all hit that subscribe button. Yes, sir. For sure. We out of here, man.